of the four contestants runs around the track once. Sometimes you can find that, like in athletics, the person that starts was running very well and his team was at the first, but at the handing of the baton, um, a team next to them beat them and in the second lap, they were third, and in the third lap, they were third, and sometimes in the final lap, they just come first. Because it's really never over until it is finally over. I have always talked about the football soccer scenario that has happened over and over again to many people when a match is being played, especially like a national match, and um, it looks like the home team is losing. And um, the full 90 minutes have been played, and the board goes up and they say three minutes extra, you find a lot of people getting up, leaving the stadium because they want to get their cars before the stampede and the traffic um, congestion starts and they want to go because they feel that it's all over. And sometimes when they're getting to their car or when they're driving off and they hear a thunderous scream of goal, and then they want to turn the car back and come into the stadium to see what happened. And um, they get to hear it on the radio, it's a deafening, silence, the commentators are taking like another one minute to talk and you're on your edge trying to find out what happened, what happened. And then you are told that the home nation equalized or scored two goals in a short period and won. Because for you, when you left, you thought it was over, but it's never over until it is over. And that's how our lives can be. And sometimes it may be really difficult if from January to August, we have not really done our best, and then we want to try quickly in September, October, November, and December. But um, it's possible. Even if we do not get success, life, I believe, is more about positioning yourself in the direction of progress than just jumping into progress. You know, uh, I have often said that one of my favorite verses in the Bible is Proverbs 22. 29. I, I talk about that verse at least maybe two or three times a month. It's a very straightforward verse that goes like this. Have you seen a person who is diligent in what he or she does? Their diligence would make them stand before great people and not before obscure and mean people. In other words, if I'm um, not diligent and somebody just bumps me into a position because maybe they have access, they have influence, they have money, it's the party in power, it's the person of influence, they have connections. You know, by their connection, by their power, I can get there, but that doesn't make me perform because what I can't do, I can't do. What I don't have, I can't give. And sooner or later, my exalted position becomes my downfall and it becomes a great downfall because I am way out of my depth. I am a uh, a circle um, in a square uh, hole or a, a square peg in a round hole, as they say. But if I build myself up and position myself, even if I don't get the immediate success, one thing I am sure of is that I am far away from failure, I am far away from laziness, I am far away from ineptitude, I am far away from anything that will take me downwards. I am positioned in my mindset, in my paradigms, in my thought processes, in the pressures and self-discipline I bring upon my life to get there. And so October, November, December, um, about 90, 89 days, there are decisions we can make, whether they be academic decisions, financial decisions, um, decisions of health, restoration, empowerment, relational, social, spiritual decisions. Um, if we position ourselves rightly, we will get there. This evening, my mind goes to somebody in the Bible that we will look at and uh, maybe over a period of two weeks. But before we do that, um, let me just say it's also that time of the year when Abiding Word Ministries, we are in our last month of our church year, and so our annual conference comes up at the end of this month, 31st of October, running through the 4th of November. That's five days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at our place in Baca. We have a great program lined up, and of course, everybody is welcome because it's free. Um, last year, we had a saxophonist. This year, we have the same saxophonist and a violinist, a violinist from Miami, um, Tallahassee, Florida, um, USA, and um, we have soprano voices, we have great things, and I have um, one of my good friends coming um, to be our guest uh, preacher. And of course, we have local groups in the Gambia, um, two main groups that I love so much, uh, a group called Brothers in Christ, and a very great group called Oaks of Righteousness. They would all be there, we'll just have great fun from the 31st of October 
through the 4th of November. For us, it's that time where we are trying to fine tune ourselves, take our marching orders, and run for another 12 months to November um, 2013. So it's an open invitation to us all, and uh, we're welcome. Each night we start at 7 in the evening, and we trust God for his blessing upon our lives and, of course, upon our beautiful nation. Um, the, there is somebody in the Bible, and her situation is not exclusive to her because everything in the scriptures in the Bible is a lesson and an example and a precept for us. And we will do well to learn not so much the experiences as we learn the lessons from other people's experiences. In other words, you know, fire doesn't have to burn me for me to know fire burns your fingers. If I have seen somebody's fingers, I've heard their story, even the way they narrate it, my, I have goosebumps, then I know that I should not go near fire. So I know we were taught when we were growing up that experience is the best teacher. Um, I think I defy. You don't really always have to have experience to be taught. Sometimes you can see the lesson from other people, especially in things like finances. You know, if somebody has wasted his money or her money and he has become poor, and has made wise choices in his life, and in his later part of his life or her life begins to live in regret. Had I known, I would have built a house, I would have invested, I would have done this, I would have trained myself, I would have, you know, you look at that person and you tell yourself, I don't want that future. That's the future and it's an option. And it's an option that comes your way from unwise planning, from um, doing nothing and expecting manna from heaven to fall upon you. Uh, but Challenges come to every one of us, and challenges do not always come to push us down. I think most challenges come for us to look inward and resolve to change and ask God Almighty for his grace upon our lives. As I always say, that grace is available to everybody, but it's readily available to you when you make that personal commitment to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. For me, it's non-negotiable. When you make that commitment, you link yourself again to the order of creation, to the purposefulness and the meaning of your life. Because we are seven billion of the earth, on the earth. We may look alike as black people. We think all the Chinese look alike. They think we all look alike. But everybody is unique and individual in themselves. If not, there'll be chaos when you get to airports. My fingerprint looks like somebody else's. I mean, you'll be detained at airports. You'll be picked up, and maybe your fingerprint mistakenly looks like that of a terrorist. You'll be in trouble. But everybody has a unique set of thumbprints, fingerprints, retina, so many things that make you individually unique. And much as there may, there may be similarities, sometimes in vision, in desires, in personalities, in, in, in pensions, in training, um, in body language, we are all unique. But despite that, challenges come to us all. What makes the dividing line between two people is their attitude when a challenge comes. There are people who, when a challenge comes, they just give up, they quit, they resign, they fall down, they can never rise up from that point. They blame everybody else for the challenge. There was no power. There was no water. The economy is bad. The dollar is going up. We are marginalized. It's because I'm a woman. I am a foreigner. The sun is hot. You know, I didn't have a visa from the Scandinavian embassy. I didn't get the job. They blocked my promotion. There are people who are stuck in, their, in that place, and they seem to forget that life has moved on. Because the people you complain to also have their own challenges, sometimes bigger and tougher challenges than you. And every time you stumble at a challenge, somebody else overcame that challenge. The challenge may not necessarily be the same in quantum power, but in principle, it's the same thing. It either brings you down or you use it and turn it around for better. Even when you make a mistake or when we make mistakes, we learn from them and we pick up and go and we don't stay there and make a shrine around our mistakes and want everybody to come and cry with us. We move on because by the time you get up sometimes, time has been lost. Opportunities have gone and people have moved on. There's another, there's another set of people on the other side of the dividing line of challenge who look at this challenge and tell themselves this is the first and the last, or at least this is the last. This will not happen to me again. 